Hey, this is Super Game Ghost, and you're watching the top 10 most expensive Game Boy games. For reference, this list is based off of complete inbox prices. Let's start. Battletoads and Double Dragon is a beat em up released in 1993. It was developed by Rare and published by Trade West. This game was originally developed for the NES then ported to the SNES, Genesis, and the Game Boy. As the title suggests, it is a crossover of Techno's Double Dragon and Rare's Battletoads franchises. Players were able to select between five characters, the Double Dragon's Billy and Jimmy, as well as the three Toads, Zit, Rash, and Pimple. This game has regularly been called a classic of beat-em-ups for its gameplay, interactive levels, and memorable soundtrack. The Game Boy version of the game fell a bit short due to the handheld obvious graphic and audio constraints. However, it is still a fairly close adaptation and is a decent title for the original Game Boy. Battletoads and Double Dragon goes for 1030 bucks. Metal Masters is a fighting game released in 1993. It was developed by Bit Managers and published by Electro Brain. Game was originally released for Atari ST, Amiga, and MS DOS in 1991. From what I gather, the story revolves around the city which is having a fighting robot tournament. In this same city resides an evil Baron who is searching for a legendary super robot that would enable him to take control of the city. As the player, you must collect the super robot parts before the Baron gets a hold of them. The gameplay simply consists of modifying your robot and battling it versus other robots. I find that the best way to go about winning in these battles is to destroy the opposing robot's arms. This cripples the enemy robot and they will no longer be able to attack you. Metal Masters goes for 1075 bucks. Ninja Boy 2 is an action RPG released in 1991. It was developed and published by Culture Brain. In Japan, this game is known as Super Chinese Land 2. It is the second title in the Super Chinese series of games. The story goes something like this. Intergalactic aliens blow up the Super Chinese Brothers spaceship. Fortunately, they get into an escape pod and crash land into a planet known as Future Land. Ultimately, they must build a spacecraft from the ground up and defeat the bad alien guys, or something like that. The game itself plays like a typical RPG where you travel town to town in the overworld in order to progress the story. What's unique about this game is that random encounters are fought in the style of a beat-em-up game. During these random encounters you are also able to access a menu and select different items and magics to use. Ninja Boy 2 goes for $1,100. Mega Man 5 is an action platformer released in 1994. It was developed by Minakuchi Engineering and published by Capcom. This game is the fifth installment in the popular Mega Man series for the Game Boy. Unlike previous Mega Man adaptations for the Game Boy, this game has several features which differ from its NES counterpart. Some of these features include unique bosses, the Mega Arm, and a companion robot named Tango. The plot revolves around powerful new enemies from outer space called Star Droids who aim to rule the world. Like other Mega Man games, you are able to select stages in a non-linear fashion and pick up new weapons from each boss. Mega Man 5 for the Game Boy goes for $1430. Sumo Fighter is a beat-em-up slash side-scroller released in 1991. It was developed by Kid and published by IMAX. In this game, you play as a sumo wrestler who is on a mission to save someone named Kayo. This game features five stages, each with three subsections and a boss at the end of each stage. The sumo wrestler has four moves that they can use to defeat enemies. A ground stomp, an open hand punch, a throw, and a headbutt. When starting the game, you are prompted to choose either easy or hard as the difficult setting. After beating the game in hard mode, a new super mode is available with new enemies and harder boss fights. I played this game on easy difficulty and it was still quite challenging. One thing of note is that the level designs and music are actually very well done. 
Sumo Fighter goes for $1,500. Toxic Crusaders is a side-scroller released in 1992. It was developed by Real-Time Associates and published by Bandai. This game is based off of the 1984 film The Toxic Avenger by Trauma Entertainment. It was a multi-console release and was available for the NES, Game Boy, and the Genesis. Bandai was also developing a version for the SNES, but the release was scrapped at some point. The game has five playable characters to choose from. Toxie, Junkyard, Nozone, Headbanger, and Major Disaster. It features six stages with the boss at the end of each stage. Not much to say about this title except that it's extremely repetitive and the levels seem to drag on forever. Toxic Crusaders goes for $1,800. Kid Dracula is a side-scrolling platformer released in 1993. It was developed and published by Konami. A spin-off of the Castlevania series, this game is simultaneously a direct sequel and a remake of the NES game released in 1990 bearing the same name. The story centers around Dracula's son who must defeat the big bad guy, Gallimoth. Throughout the game you acquire new abilities for Kid Dracula and re-recruit former minions who have sided with Gallimoth. This game is another gem in Konami's extensive library of video games. The story is light-hearted and humorous while the gameplay is engaging and enjoyable. Kid Dracula goes for $2,250. Spud's Adventure is an action RPG released in 1991. It was developed and published by Atlas. This game is part of Atlas's Puzzle Boy series. In this game you play as a wandering potato who must rescue a tomato princess that was kidnapped by an evil beetle. You are aided by other vegetable friends, Arnie Eggplant, Garrett Carrot, and Terry Turnup in your quest to save Princess Mato. In order to save the princess, you must ascend a tower which has numerous floors filled with a variety of enemies, puzzles, power-ups, and cutscenes. The game has an overhead view and the playable characters use projectiles to defeat enemies. Spud's Adventure goes for 2,350 bucks. F1 Pole Position is a Formula One racing simulation game released in 1993. It was developed by Natsu System and published by Ubisoft. This game is a localized version of Nakajima Satoru F1 Hero GB92, The Graded Driver, for the North American and European markets. It features various drivers from different countries and many customizations for the driver's vehicles. This game isn't exactly my cup of tea, but it's kind of impressive for the original Game Boy and will probably appeal to fans of old racing games. F1 Pole Position goes for $2,500. And the number one spot on our list is Amazing Tater. Amazing Tater is a puzzle game released in 1991. It was developed and published by Atlas. Like Spud's Adventure, this game is part of the Puzzle Boy series and is known as Puzzle Boy 2 in Japan. The game consists of various puzzles where you must lead a potato to an exit. The game features four different game modes, some of which are used as tutorials for beginning players. Essentially, you're moving blocks and other obstacles in order to gain access to the exit. Amazing Tater goes for 5,000 bucks. Thanks for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe.